Hello everyone, it's Lori at ArdentDesigns.ca. I'm going to show you today how you can draw this mushroom logo in Inkscape. So I'm just going to scoot this out of the way and we'll get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the circle tool. So let's grab the circle, click and drag out an ellipse, maybe about that size. Go to the select tool, I'm going to shape it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to go to the Edit Objects Colors Gradients menu, click on this. We're going to come over to the Stroke Style. I'm going to choose Pixels. And I'm going to make it something bigger. Let's try 15 and see how that looks. Okay, that's probably good for our purposes. So I'm going to zoom in here. And if I go to the Nodes tool here, you'll see that this is still a shape. What I want to do is turn it to a path, but I still want to keep the stroke property. So I'm going to choose this one here instead of this one. Make sure you choose object to path. That'll keep the stroke properties, but still give us some nodes to edit and change. Okay, so I'm going to grab the square tool. Click and drag out a square. And then I'm going to turn these snapping paths on. This one here. And uh, these for me automatically come on. What I want to do is kind of snap it to the corner of this circle. And then I'm going to press shift, select the circle. We'll go path, difference. This is the shape that we want. Go to the nodes tool here, select these two. And we're going to choose this button here, right here. Okay, so it gives us kind of a mushroomy shape. And that's what it should look like. Okay, so you can further play with the nodes if you want to. I'm just going to leave it. A nice symmetrical shape. I'm going to maybe select this one and I'll make it a little bit bigger by pressing control. Uh, I'll turn those off. Might have a double node here. I do. Okay, I'll select both of them. Let's see if I can just arrow it up just with the uh, arrow key on the keyboard. Maybe something like that anyway. Okay, so we have this shape here. Now let's go to the rectangle tool and we'll just click on the board and create a, another rectangle. I'll zoom out here so we can see what we're doing. Uh, that size will do. And again, this is a shape. We need it to have nodes to edit. So let's go object to path again. And now when we click on it, we have four nodes. So let's select these bottom ones. And again, we'll go up to this button right here. Click on that. And it gives us a, a funny shape on the bottom. And the top, I'm actually going to taper in. So I'll just select this node here, and I'm going to use the arrow key on the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. And this one, too. And left arrow key on the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this here. Um, I'm going to add an extra node in the middle here. So what I'll do is I'll select both of these bottom nodes, and I'll click this button here one time. And it will insert the node directly center between those two. So with this node, I'm going to select it. I'm going to press Control and drag it upwards just a little bit. You see it's kind of pointed like a, like a corner. So let's choose this button as well. We'll just round it up. Give it some character. And uh, let's see here. Let's select both of these objects. Let's, give them, let's make them centered. So we'll open up our Align and Distribute right here. And center those. And I'll close that up to the side panel here. Click off the graphic. Let's select this object. Press uh, Control D or right click and duplicate. That's your shortcut. And with the duplicated copy, let's turn it upside down. And let's press Shift and Blue so that we can see what we're doing here. Press Control. Let's drag this down. And zoom in using Control and the mouse wheel. Just going to press control and drag this up to maybe here. Uh, that looks okay. And what I want to do is break this portion of it. So let's add some nodes. Let's go to this nodes tool here. And to add a node, you just simply double click on the area where you want to add it. So I'm going to double click right here and then select it. Come up here and break it. Select that one and break it. And over here we will also double click, select it, go to the nodes tool and double click right about here. 
and then select it, break it, select it, and break it. This button right here. Okay, so let's select this one and we'll press delete. Let's do about using control on the mouse wheel. So we got here. This one here, we'll press delete. And this here also. Okay, so now this blue object, let's turn it black. Press shift in black, sorry. And then we'll drop it to the bottom with this button right here. And we may need to adjust it a little bit. Let's try the arrow up key. I'm going to undo that. Okay, I'm just going to go to the nodes tool and I'm going to physically select the node and then I'm going to place it so that it looks like it's one object. And you can kind of see like when you hover over this, the, the red line there. Okay, we'll go with that and then I'll select it. I'm going to push it up a little bit. It doesn't need to be that big. Just grab the handle and push it in. Okay, that's looking a little better. Okay. All right, we'll go with that. And now we need to break. We need to break this. Let's turn that blue for now. So let's go to the nodes tool here, and we want to click about here and click about here. We basically want to hide sections inside other lines. So let's select that node, break it. Select that node, break it. With it selected, just press delete. And this one, delete. Okay, and then we can turn it black by pressing shift and black. Send it to the bottom. Okay, we need to break this section here. Uh, maybe I'll turn it blue, press shift and blue. And we'll zoom in here. We want to break it right here. Double click, double click to create a node. And I'm going to select this middle middle stuff here. I'm going to break that, break it, and then delete, delete. Okay, perfect. Let's turn that black by pressing shift and black. And let's have a look here. Okay, so we've got the basis of our mushroom here. Okay, so now at this point, we're going to select everything. It's important that you have, like I said in the beginning, I have 15 point stroke. Make sure at this point that it's finalized that you have your 15 pixel stroke there. And we'll go path, stroke to path. So that's finalized, path and union. Okay, so now it's all one object. Okay, so the way we get color here, the fastest way to get color inside this, because now that's just kind of, uh, let me raise that to the top here. It takes on, it's just transparent. There's nothing in between it. So let's, um, yeah, let's break it apart. We'll go path, break apart. And then we'll click off the graphic. Let's select the top portion here. I'm going to press F7 to get the dropper. And I'm going to choose this green color that I've already pre-selected. And of course, this is on top, so we need to send it to the bottom so that we can see everything else that we broke apart. Okay, so that is what we have so far. Um, what I want to do with this green object here, let's zoom in here. I want to give it kind of an extended line. So I'm going to do that with the pen tool. So make sure your snapping tools are on. And again, I click this one and these two come on automatically for me. Just turn them on. And they'll help you be able to snap into this corner here. And what we're doing is we're just kind of extending this line here. So I'll click a little bit off to the side and pull. And don't worry about not getting it right the first time. We can move the nodes after. Press Shift and L. And that gives us a nice corner. And then click here, click and pull. And then we press Shift L and we go back to the beginning. And then I'll press F7 to get the dropper tool. I'll come over here, I'll press Shift and X to get rid of the black outline. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Um, if you need to play around with yours, just select it and go to the Nodes tool and you can select whatever node that you didn't like and then just, you know, adjust as you see fit. Okay, uh, you can also pull that over a little bit if you want to physically move it. Okay, 
Uh, it's actually pretty good. I like that. So I'm going to press Control D. I'm going to duplicate it. The duplicated copy, I'm going to flip it with this button right here. Press Control. And with your snaps on, it should easily snap into this corner right here. So press Control and drag it off until it snaps. Looks good. Okay, so let's select this. Press Control D. We'll duplicate it. Press Control. Actually, we don't need to press Control. We do need to change this a little bit so that it fits. I'm just going to click it again to get the rotation handles. Maybe position it. And then I'll press Control D again. And click it again to get the scaling handles. Let's turn the snapping tools off. It's very useful, but sometimes they get in the way. Let's go back to the nodes tool. And this one here, I kind of want it to take the, the out, outside shape of this side. So I'm going to change it a little bit. I'll click this node first. I'll use this handle to make it more concave convex or um, just to, to take shape of this side and then we'll make this one different make it smaller okay so I'm just playing around with the nodes you can also just use the pen tool for each shape but I just find it easier to use the ones that I already have and um, the other thing is just make sure that should maybe make sure that they're kind of spaced out evenly. I think it looks better that way. Select this, and again, we'll just shape it the way we want it. All right. How does that look? Not bad. So we'll select both of these. Press Control D. Press Shift to select them both. Press Control D to duplicate them. We'll come up here, flip it the other way, and then I'm going to press Control and drag both of these off to the side here. All right. So we want to select all our little green objects that we just made, all six of them here, and then select the main green object. Um, shoot, I made a mistake. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this black object, press shift, select this object. I'm going to go path, union, and I'm going to use the black object to punch a hole in the green object. So press shift, select the green object, and we'll go path, reference. Okay, so basically we're back to square one. Let's select everything and we'll go path union. Let's select press control Z. Let's make sure nothing is grouped. Ungroup everything. Path union. Okay, that's better. And now we'll go to path break apart and we'll start that all over again. Select the top object, send it to the bottom. Let's select the middle objects and let's press F7 and turn them yellow. And there we go. All right, so let's grab the circle tool. Press, uh, let me just grab this yellow here. There, that's better. Okay, so let's grab the circle tool, press shift. Shift and control with the circle tool, press shift and control. Scale up a circle, nice and perfect. Let's turn it yellow by pressing F7 and getting the dropper tool. Or uh, just uh, select whatever color you'd like to. It doesn't have to be a green and yellow mushroom. It could be, you know, it could be bright pink if you wanted it to be. Control D. I'm going to duplicate this. Let me scale it up a little bit. Control D. And I'll make this one much smaller. Control D. All right. Uh, maybe a little more whimsical fashion here. Okay, so this central portion here, let's press Control D to duplicate it. And we'll turn it blue, just so we can see what we're doing. And then we'll press Control D to duplicate it again, and we'll turn this pink. And this pink copy, let's scale it up using Shift and Control, nice and big. Press Control, and we'll drag it over straight. And 
maybe there. I'll press shift, select the pink and the blue, and we'll go path difference. Okay. So I'll press F7 to get the dropper, and I'll just drag it through this color I've already selected. If you find this is too, look at that. Okay, so I have an extra extra piece here, so I'm going to need to break that apart, pass, break apart, and then I can just delete this portion here. This here, if you if you think it's a little bit too big, we can press Control 9. That is an uh, inset, Control uh, parentheses or Control 9, either one works. So we just make it smaller. So I'll just press Control 9 again. Alright, that's kind of okay. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. And one more down here. So see, I just got this this uh, object right here. I'm going to use the pen tool to create that. Click maybe about here. Click and pull with the pen tool. Click and pull. And then we need a corner, so we press Shift and L to get our corner. Come back to the beginning, click and pull. And again, don't worry about being perfect. You'll see that I've kind of overlapped here. We can fix that. So let's go to the Nodes tool. Select it. And just uh, adjust the handle as you see fit. You can adjust this one too. You can also move the node to suit where you want it to want it to be located. Okay, so let's fill that in by pressing F7 and dragging through our color. Press Shift and X. Get rid of the stroke. Might even fix that a little more. Something like that. I don't spend too much time fussing with it. Okay, so that is the mushroom and all my elements here. I'm going to group it together with this button right here. And I'll put it aside and we'll we'll get to the text here. So we need a circle to do that. Let's grab the circle tool, press shift control, create a circle. Let's press shift in black to make it a stroke and then X to get rid of the fill. So we just have an outline here. And I'm going to open this Edit Objects Colors Gradients, and I'm going to choose the size of this. I don't need it to be 15. I need it just big enough to see it, but not enough to cover the text. I'll press Control D. I want a duplicate of this circle, and I'm going to press Shift and Control, scale it in. Okay, so we have two circles like that. So I'm going to grab the Text tool under the A right here. Portobello, or you know, whatever. Control D. I'm going to duplicate it. Press Control. I'll drag that down. Select both text items. Go to the T menu up here for text. Open it up. And I love this font. Uh, I'll have a link to the to where you can download, where you can buy it. You have to buy this one. Otherwise, just use your own font. I'm going to press F7. And I think I'll type Italian in here. Okay, so let's see here. Just gonna eyeball. I think that needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna, with both of them selected, I'll just scale them up a little bit. So let's, I think that's probably okay. We can change it afterwards. Might scale that down just a bit. Okay. So with Portobello selected, I'll press shift to select the inner circle. This can be our top text. Go text, put on path. So one thing about this, um, when we go to the text tool, you need to make sure that your text is on centered. Okay, to so make sure like this is, it's a hamburger menu, but that's what it means. Make sure your text is centered. So click off the graphic and just select the circle. Don't select the text, just the circle. Select it again to get the rotation handles on this. Turn it. So the P and the O look like they're pretty flush. Okay, I'm going to click it again because I need to scale it up a little bit. Click it again to get the scale, uh, scaling handles. This one here, shift and control, and we'll scale that up till it touches the outer circle. You see that the B and the L's and the P are just about touching it. Okay, yeah, we'll have to change the font size. 
So with the Portobello selected, we'll go to the text tool and we have 70. Let's try 65. 70, okay. 75. 80. Oh. Getting closer, 85 maybe. Oh, 90. I kind of want it to come halfway. Uh, 95. Again, it's a matter of personal preference, I suppose. Now, I'm going to close this circle in just a little bit. The outer circle, shift and control. I want it to be pretty close to touching the, the tall letters here. I know this is lowercase, so it's a little bit harder to match it up. So this font, I think I said it was 95. 95. It's, this one is 101. So let's make it the same. With the Italian selected, we'll go 95. Okay. Okay, so with Italian selected, press shift, select the uh, larger circle, text, put on path, click off the graphic. You'll see that this is incorrect looking, so we'll select the circle. I'm going to choose this button to invert the circle. Okay, this button right here. Now it's on the right way. Let's click the circle again to get the rotation handles. And we'll just uh, scroll it down here. Now, this is really squishy. When, which happens a lot when you when you do this, when you put it on the second one or you invert the circle, the text kind of gets squished. So let's select the text, go to the A menu. I'm gonna triple click it. This button right here, spacing between letters. So this is gonna space it out a little more and we want it to be spaced similar to the upper text. Okay, so let's try five and see what that does. Not enough, let's try 10. Okay, that's pretty close. Click off the graphic. Um, I think I'm going to go with that. And the last thing I want to do here is make sure that, you know, the text is kind of on the right way. So I'm going to drag down a guide. You basically just, whoops, basically just pull it down out of here. Okay, so outside circle, select it, select it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm just going to pull it till I think it's centered. It's hard to tell because one of them is italic, or sorry, uh, large case, and the other is lower case. So just kind of eyeball it and do your best. And then get rid of that guide. Okay, so we have our text. Okay. So when we're satisfied with this, we can go to path, object to path, and we do that because it has weird glitchy things. If you take the circle away, sometimes the text will go back to uh, its original form. So this way we can take the circle away and it's not hurting anything. Okay, delete. And this is grouped, so that's good. Let's shrink this down using Shift and Control. And we'll place it in the center here. Okay, let's select our text items. Press Control G to group it. The group button is right here. And then I'm going to select the mushroom, open up your align and distribute, center vertically, horizontally. This needs to be scaled down, so let's press Shift and Control. And then the last thing we need to do is press control and we'll turn this twice. Okay, so it gives it kind of a whimsical look to it. And, uh, you know, I don't know if this is like a, a restaurant logo or if it's for like, you know, mushroom bread or something or mushroom pasta. Uh, anyway, that is a fun mushroom logo tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.